Welcome back, my friends. Well, I guess we all knew it was coming. As expected, Intel reported weak Q3 earnings yesterday. Wall Street analysts were expecting a weak quarter and that is what they got. Shares in Intel are down almost 50% so far in 2022. And, actually, the company has been weakening for some time now. This weak Q3 report could not have come at a worse time for Intel. Personal computer sales are generally low right now. Everyone bought new computers for to work at home during the pandemic. Now, they all have new computers and it will be a while before they need a new one again. Data center business is low because big tech companies' finances are weakening. Much of this is because of a weakening macroeconomic environment. That Intel has been failing to make the right investments in the future of the business for years. CEO Pat Gelsinger has committed to an ambitious plan to get Intel's mojo back. But that cannot be done overnight. And it now has to be done during a period of overall economic weakness. So, what does all of this mean for Intel? What does it mean for semiconductor chip companies? What does it mean for big tech companies? What does it mean for the economy? And, what does it mean for the future of the United States? But, before we get into all of that, please press the like button and leave us a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. Believe it or not, shares in Intel actually traded 7% higher in extended trading after the Q3 earnings call. That is probably because Intel spent all of Q3 lowering expectations low enough to beat the lowered expectations. But I think that it is also because the company committed to cost reductions. Intel announced lower than expected earnings guidance for the full fiscal year. The company also said it will cut up to $10 billion from cost reductions and efficiency improvements. The earnings numbers were as follows. Earnings were $0.59 cents per share, adjusted. That compared to $0.32 cents per share which was expected by Wall Street. Revenue was $15.34 billion for Q3. That compared go $15.25 billion expected by Wall Street analysts. But that revenue number was 15% lower than in Q3 of last year. If you recall from Intel's Q2 earnings call, Q2 revenue was down 22% from the same quarter last year. Net income came in at $1.02 billion. That was down from $6.82 billion in Q3 of last year. We are planning for the economic uncertainty to persist into 2023, CEO Pat Gelsinger said in the earnings call. A global recession is possible, said CFO David Zinsner. We are targeting $3 billion in reductions of cost of sales and operating expenses in 2023, Zinsner said. Annual savings will reach $8 billion to $10 billion by the end of 2025, Zinsner added. Reports surfaced earlier in October that Intel was planning layoffs. The projection is for thousands of positions to be eliminated. Gelsinger alerted employees that Intel would be making cost cuts, including layoffs. Inclusive in our efforts will be steps to optimize our headcount, Gelsinger said. These are difficult decisions affecting our loyal Intel family, Gelsinger told analysts in the earnings call. In Q3, $8.12 billion in revenue came from the client computing group. That is the group that includes chips for personal computers. Revenue for that group is down 17% from Q3 of last year. Personal computer shipments were down about 20% year over year. Basically, work, study and playing games were big during the pandemic. So, everyone bought new computers in 2020 and 2021. Now demand is lower because all of that demand was pulled forward. Q3 demand for personal computers was especially soft in consumer and education markets. Also, personal device makers sold down their inventories in anticipation of new processors in the holiday season. The data center and AI business units saw revenue drop 27% year over year. That segment includes server chips, memory and field programmable gate arrays. The data center TAM is holding up better, Gelsinger said. Although enterprise in China continued to show signs of weakness, as do some, but not all, cloud customers, Gelsinger said. In the data center category, Intel grew share slower than the rest of the market, Gelsinger added. Revenue from the network and edge business unit was up 14% year over year, but from a low base. Intel Foundry Services won a new customer named MediaTek. Gelsinger also announced that Intel began construction of a new factory in Ohio. Overall, 
Intel plans to invest $20 billion in the Ohio campus. This week Mobileye went public after being owned by Intel since 2017. Intel still holds more than 50% of Mobileye shares. Mobileye makes chips for autonomous driving cars. Management guided to a lower revenue and earnings forecast for the full year of 2022. Now the full year guidance is $1.95 in adjusted earnings per share. That is based on revenue of $64 billion. If you recall from the Q2 earnings call, Intel projected $2.30 in adjusted earnings per share. That was based on a revenue range of $65 billion to $68 billion. So, in just the past quarter, Intel is reducing their guidance by 20%, which is stunning. Shares in Intel are down by almost 50% so far this year. By way of comparison, the S&P 500 index is down about 20% in 2022. So, weakness continues at Intel. Intel now really needs new products to hit the market in order to drive sales. Yes, the current macroeconomic environment is weak. And, it will probably stay weak until the next big thing comes on the scene. So, Intel is really in control of its own destiny. New chips, including the new Raptor Lake and Sapphire Rapids are running late. And, by creating anticipation over future products, Intel has slowed the sales of its existing products. Now, the company has no choice other than to cut costs and bring out the new chips as soon as possible. As you know, Meta also reported Q3 earnings this week. As expected, it was an earnings disaster. Meta has been reporting declining revenues for a few quarters now. Shareholders are revolting. Layoffs are coming. Shareholders and Wall Street analysts are growing restless. As everyone knows by now, shares in Meta have lost 65% of their value in the past year. Rumors are swirling that the company is preparing for big layoffs. Already, Meta is said to be conducting stealth layoffs without making big public announcements. Meanwhile, users continue to flee the main Facebook platform. Revenue has declined for the past two quarters. Expenses skyrocketed to $22.1 billion in Q3. Revenue for Q3 is down 4% as compared to the same quarter in 2021. Meta's Virtual Reality Labs unit is responsible for an outsized portion of the sky-high expenses. The Virtual Reality Labs unit lost $9.4 billion so far so far this year. What is worse, revenue from the Virtual Reality unit fell by 50% as compared to Q3 of last year. Meta's shares have lost about two-thirds of their value since their peak one year ago. Meanwhile, founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg is telegraphing layoffs and even encouraging some people to leave the company. The metaverse is not cheap, it is costing billions of dollars every year to build. So far, Wall Street investors do not seem to be buying it. Traders are heavily selling meta stock. Some Wall Street analysts think that the downward momentum is actually an irrecoverable death spiral. Meta remains a dominant player in mobile advertising. Meta ended Q2 with $40 billion in cash on its balance sheet. Wall Street analysts are forecasting meta revenue to continue to decline with no end in sight. User count activity in North America has been on the decline for two years now. But, what do you think? Please leave us a comment below and hit the like button. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. Please share this video on social media. Thank you for watching.